three, two, one. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining for another live interview. Today is a little bit different. Um, we are speaking to a very talented lady today, a very accomplished Danish singer and songwriter that actually has links to British and Danish royalty. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, you may know her better as the winner of Eurovision in 2013 with her touching song, Only Teardrops, Emily DeForest. Thank you so, so much for joining today, Emily. Thank you, and thank you for having me. Oh, it's, it's an honor to, to get to speak to you, and I, I have so many questions for you. I, I want to get to know you a little more personally, so if it's all right, can we ask a few personal questions to start? Yeah, of course. Fire away. <laughs> Emily, you know, if, no, not if, were you always musical as a child? Um, I mean, I was always singing. Uh, that's what everyone tells me, like my mom um, or my aunts and uncles, my siblings. I was like that yeah. annoying kid who always had to sing <laughs> <laughs> outside in the garden on the front porch and in the living room and just at family parties and get together. So yeah. I yeah. took every chance to just sing. Oh. <laughs> Did you put on like little shows for the family? Oh yeah, with like costumes and like dance routines. I wasn't very good at it. I, I, I don't really dance anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really shitty at that. But, um, but yeah, yeah, definitely. And I went to um, a school with um, a lot of music and acting. So we did several plays and like concerts every year. I mean, all classes working together from like kindergarten class and up until like ninth grade. So um, we were like dragged on a stage all the time. So that was, that was great fun. Yeah. So you're always like wanting to perform very confident in yourself. You weren't shy. Oh yeah. I was actually, I was very shy. I was, and had stage fright and I remember I think I started like singing solo like at the school when I was like eight and it continued I think that stage fright until I was like 14 I mean I remember everyone saying when I was like on stage and if I had like the lyrics on a piece of paper my hand would just like shake like that and everyone could see it so um I was really nervous actually until I started um playing like more regular gigs when I was 14 until I was 19, I was playing in a duo with a Scottish musician and we played like little festivals and concerts in Denmark. And my mom was like the roadie and the driver. So I got out and played gigs every weekend. Um, I'm not she even sure it was allowed it. everywhere. Yeah, kind of. Well, you know, she's never pushed me or anything, but she was like, if this is what you want to do. And obviously I was 14, so I couldn't drive a car. So she would drive us and, um, I'm not sure it was actually legal because they were like serving alcohol a lot of those places when I was 14, but I would just get like a hot chocolate and everything was fine. So yeah. So then it kind of went away because I, I was out playing gigs so often. So that was like a good... Would yeah, you good say thing. that that's what helped you get over the stage fright was just doing it more and more? Yeah, just doing it all the time. And um, like you, you get the experience. I mean, if... Even if it was quite, you know, a musical school, if if you get on stage like a couple times a year, it's still not the same as going out every weekend, which I did because it was like my job. I, I sat every day after school and would um, call like, uh, you know, concert places and uh, and all kinds of people to um, book our concerts and and they thought I was really annoying because I just kept calling until I got the gigs. But um, but yeah, that was kind of my my job as a teenager from I was 14 to I was 19, and then Eurovision happened. So yeah. Wow. We're gonna we're gonna get to Eurovision in a little bit. Um, yeah. I want to hear all the stories about what happened. I mean, I've been into Eurovision since I was like six years old. So I want to hear about Oh really? Yeah. 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 
So if you can't tell. <laughs> oh yeah, I was gonna say, I love the t-shirt. <laughs> it's great. Exactly, exactly. But if if you had not become a a singer um, or yeah. a songwriter, what what would you have liked to have become? Um, I've always loved acting, and you know it's kind of the same escape when you listen to music music when you watch films. So um, I mean, acting, especially film, I love theater as well, but um, I'm just really into film, old films, and um, it's actually a big hobby of mine. So, uh, and I do a bit of acting on the side and like short movies and stuff like that. So, um, and it has similarities with music, of course. Um, but um, as you know, I'm really into history as well and archeology. span So, um, and, and I know this, uh, this badass Danish lady called Sinead of Abe, who's like, pretty much the Danish female Indiana Jones. And if I hadn't been a singer, I would want to be her. So yeah, <laughs> that or an actress, but um, yeah, I just love history. Yeah. And, or uh, you and could archaeology become, is so interesting. You could have become an archeologist who's in front of the camera, you see. Oh yeah, that's... Okay. <laughs> Exactly. Well, I know, yeah. I know uh, Keith, who's on here, he's writing a story about um, two archaeologists who fall in love and all of these things. So uh, I think, I think we have our actress. Oh, well, yeah. I'm here. I mean, if you need me. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, I think you, would, you would be an excellent actress. I think the singing and the acting, I think it sort of goes hand in hand, right? Yeah, I think there's some uh, similarities, and and um, and the few times I've I've done some like acting gigs or like short films, it felt very um, natural. I just done like a, a, a horror short movie, and yeah. and it's just really fun. So I think if if you're on stage in some way, so even like a model, a dancer, I mean, there's definitely similarities um, to acting. Yeah. What What were you doing so, in this new this new film? Um, I can't say too much. It's, uh, I know the guy sent it to a couple of like short movie horror film festivals in the US. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm like, uh, well, maybe not the main character, but we're like, we're actually like four people in the film because it was shot during uh, COVID. But, um, oh my God, it's, I'm pretty creepy actually. Oh, I'm pretty oh. mean. Yeah, I'm like, there's like this, my friend, she's like the main character and I'm her friend and I just, I do some terrible things. Okay. <laughs> I can't say too much. When it's, she's when looking it's after this guy in a wheelchair and, and, and one evening while she's, it's her work, she's looking after this uh, guy in a wheelchair, I come over and things go crazy. Oh, good, good. I want to yeah. see that. I want to see that because I also um, write and act and direct in... Uh, my own films and I, I also have a, a couple horror movies out there so Ooh. yeah I love horror films it's like yeah my uh, sitting around what sitting I around the fire and listening to ghost stories is kind of like the same it is, feeling. It is. Mm. One, one of my friends one of my best friends we've been friends for like 21 years Tammy um, she's also a singer and an actress um, and she always acts in these films with me so yeah. maybe one day all of us will get together and we'll do a, a musical horror. How does that sound? Oh yeah, that, that, that would be fun. <laughs> I can't sing, so. Uh, oh, you can't? No, no, unfortunately. Everyone <laughs> sings with their own voice, right? Yeah, I, I can sing, but I don't sing well. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, yeah, this is some things we have flair for and other things we don't like for me in dancing, for instance, I'm a terrible dancer and I could probably like work on it and get better, but I will never have that talent like some people have. So, it's so yeah. It's so interesting that you say that because I have said this to a lot of people who are like, oh, I want to go to film school. I want to study this. I want to study that. And I always say, but you need the initial talent to be taught yeah. to make it better. If you don't have that talent, you, you can't do it. No, I, I actually agree. And I think there's very mixed opinions about that. I, I'm, 
I remember um, I took some acting classes in London and this teacher was like, you know, there's nothing called talent. The songs you just work hard, really hard, you can make it. And I feel like maybe it's also just his way of like keeping all his students and like getting them to pay. I don't, I don't know, but I was like, I mean, I just, I think, of course, like if someone is really talented and they, they're like super lazy and they don't work, I think someone who's maybe not as talented who work hard can, can get better but um but i mean there's just some things we have flair for and other things we don't and um yeah yeah. but from your case it's dancing (laughs) from your youtube videos i've noticed that you actually have a very big flair for musical instruments you play the guitar and the piano from for myself i had uh, my uh, i had a couple guitar lessons but my guitar told me to stop so you know oh my god i know i'm so bad but uh, what was he like that guy in whiplash was he like really mean uh no she was really nice she was like oh she yeah. did a couple lessons you know let's let's play some simple abba songs you know three chords okay and she was like uh-uh it's not going anywhere stop <laughs> But what, oh what drove you to what drove you to to learn playing musical instruments? Um, I mean, I can definitely play a bit of guitar, but I mean, I probably see myself more as a singer and songwriter than a musician. But I did start playing piano as a kid, but um, actually, I quit because I wasn't as into it as singing and writing. Um, I guess I didn't have the patients actually so yeah I kind of regret that now but then when I was 19 I picked up the guitar which is a bit late but um it's just a really uh great instrument especially for songwriting and that's where I use it the most yeah I always um uh, when I start writing a song it's almost always on the guitar I do write on tracks as well if someone sends me a track or if a producer makes a track and I can write a melody on top of that but usually it's the guitar and and yeah then I can do some you know, if I, I want to record something for YouTube or whatever, Instagram, like one of my own songs or a cover song, I can play it and a bit of keyboard, but um, yeah, and I've done it live as well. Um, not on all of my songs, but maybe in a concert, I play maybe half of the songs on guitar and half of them I just sing because um, I mean, it's, I can do both, but it sometimes in some songs, it can get a bit to your voice. Like I feel more free. Mm-hmm. In certain songs when I'm not playing the guitar um but but yeah it's it's a great instrument and it's um great to hide behind a guitar yeah. if you're not a great dancer <laughs> as well <laughs> so yeah. yeah yeah but you you write a lot of your own songs yourself um you compose yeah. them as well as writing the lyrics where where do you get your inspiration from um really depends i mean my own life uh friends and families experiences but also um you know from interviews or like films that i watch like if there's a cool word i write it down or um um or if i read like a book watch a film and and um then i definitely get inspired from some of those characters and and use that as well so it's like a mix of everything really Mm. um but i always write the melody first and then lyrics come later um yeah i I was wondering about that because i i don't know how to write songs how how does that process work uh for me it's like usually sitting down with the guitar and uh just play some chords and i have to admit actually usually every time something comes up like there's a melody or something i'm not saying it's always great but Usually when I sit down and try to write something, something like a little melody um, happens. And um, and sometimes it goes like really fast. Like you have like, I always, I know this is like this mixed opinions about that as well, but I always try to do the chorus first because I feel like if I start with a verse and a pre, it's always easier to make a good verse or a good pre, but to make a really good chorus is always harder. And if I start, with the verse and, and the pre, then I'm like, oh, how am I gonna top that? How am I gonna get to the chorus? And then I feel like often the chorus gets weaker. So I try to just 
finish the chorus first and then do the verse and pre. Yeah. Um, but I do think melodies are a lot easier. Like I said, I think always something comes comes up when I sit down with a guitar, but lyrics is harder because it's like lyrics are so important to me at least. And uh, you want to tell a story and not make it too cliche. And it's just a completely different craft than writing melodies actually. So I do write lyrics, but a lot of the times I might get, um, I work with some great uh, American people and British people and I might um, get them to help me out with the lyrics. So like look it through because obviously English is not my first language and I always write in English. So sometimes I need a bit of help, but. But I was gonna ask, do you, do you, have you written any songs in Danish? Um, maybe like for fun, like a couple of times. Um, but it's actually harder, I feel like writing in Danish because we don't have as many words as in English and um, Danish is not the most beautiful <laughs> language, if you ask me. <laughs> it's not the greatest language to sing in. It's pretty, it's pretty ugly actually. I think it's like maybe in top five of like the ugliest languages in the world. <laughs> Oh no, no. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm half Swedish, half Danish, and Swedish is beautiful. It's an amazing language to sing in, but yeah. Danish is, it's like a lot of sounds in your throat, kind yeah. of. Yeah, we like a have that with your throat. Afrikaans, um, in South Africa. <laughs> with what? We have that with Afrikaans in South Africa. Yeah. From the throat. Um, yeah. It's yeah, it's not up here. It's like down here, and it's. Yeah. And it's like. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's not pretty but um but it is close to you I guess your own language in a way that even though I've, I've worked so much with uh, people from the US and, and and the UK and I'm used to speaking English it's still not I guess the same as the language you were born with so um maybe I should give it a go and write more in Danish actually how how would like just for example how would you say hi how are you in Danish uh, you would say "Hi, um, Gordon," or "Hi, Okay, I'm not going to repeat <laughs> that. <laughs> I also speak really fast, so maybe that's why. "Hi, yeah. Gordon." Hi, Gordon. Oh, that was actually quite good. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I think yeah sorry what were you saying what were you saying <laughs> no i was just going to say that we have like those awful soft d's which is really hard for people to pronounce and i don't think any other language in the world has that i don't know do you know what i'm talking about yeah um i when i was living in vienna i learned to speak german and yeah from the afrikaans we used to with the g we go <sighs> yeah and with with german it's a it's a, it's a lighter sound so yeah. I understand what you mean with like trying to soften certain letters. Yeah. But like this letter is like really soft. It's like you kind of have to stick your tongue out. So like, for instance, red is like roll in Danish. So it's like a soft D. Roll. Roll. And you have to like stick your tongue out. Or like sweet is like sul. And it's like that D is like just like sticking your tongue out. So it's like really, really weird. <laughs> and no one can pronounce that ever. It's just... You're born with it, you thing. Know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But back to the, the songwriting, you said that you, you watch a movie or you see something and you get your inspiration. Yeah. For me, when I write a film, if I hear a song or I hear a piece of music, then mm. I'm like, I can fit something with that. I know what I can do with it. Yeah. What, do, you, do you use images or pictures? Do they bring stories into your mind when you're writing? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, there was a song I recently wrote that I'm really excited about actually. And those lyrics came very easily, I had the melody first, um, but I, I, just, I just saw kind of the images of this person walking on a Sunday and it's like rainy and the leaves are falling and um, driving to the ocean later on and She's waiting underneath an apple tree and well, I can't, I can't reveal too much, but I just saw all of these images. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it really helped with the lyrics. So well, definitely, it was like a little movie in here. I, I cannot <laughs> wait to see that because 
I'm pretty sure once the song is done, you're going to make an amazing music video. Oh yes, I love making music videos. It's so much fun. Yeah. Um, it really but is. Your, your music videos are always like so great and creative. I mean- You think so? They are. <laughs> if we look at Thanks. Like Hopscotch, um, we've got the, the paint going on you and, and history. Um, yeah. Like the eighties hair and the, the whole concept of going through your, your past. I love it. Yeah. We went to my my mom's house in my hometown and filmed that and got to film in my old school and my old like childhood room. So yeah. that was really fun. And and hopscotch. Um, we went to Rome actually. Uh, I filmed it with some of my friends. Yeah. Which was like a mixed experience <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> it can be dangerous working with your friends, especially if some people think that they are on vacation and some of us wants to work. But uh, we made a great video. Yeah. We're not the best of friends anymore. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, but, um, but yeah, oh my God, it was so, it was like a heat wave. I remember that summer and maybe it is every year in Rome, but it was so hot. And we went to this town called um, Calcutta, which is like, there's only like artists, artists living there and all their cats. And that's where we filmed that shot with the drone yeah oh yeah that was in Rome yeah. yeah and and um yeah it was some long hot days and um I'm not used to drinking I actually I almost never drink but I I, I I got some I got some alcohol that day so I was actually really drunk at one point so that's why I, I'm not even doing the hopscotch for real I'm like jumping like both legs it's all wrong it's not how you do like hopscotch but I was so drunk, so I couldn't stand on one leg. So. <laughs> and that's weird because I never, I never drink really. I, I don't like the taste of alcohol, but yeah. I mean, once like in a me. while. Yeah. It's like me. Oh, I you don't, don't drink? I don't drink. No. I will have um, like with dinner or whatever, if there's a, an occasion, I'll have a glass of wine, yeah. and champagne or whatever, yeah. but I'm not like, I just feel like a drink. Yeah. No, it's ugh. It's too strong. I don't know. I prefer hot chocolate, <laughs> but um, but I've yeah, learned to drink a bit of white wine. wine. What? Sorry. Like you said, you'd rather have chocolate. I'd rather have a whole. Chocolate yes. Myself. Hot chocolate. Um, but I learned to drink champagne and white wine during lockdown. That's something lockdown has learned me because I didn't drink it at all before. Um, but yeah, actually, for my music videos, even though I never drink, I have been drunk actually a few yeah. times. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked well with the videos so yeah yeah it helps loosen you up yeah exactly yeah. that's the annoying thing because it is true about alcohol it, if you've had a glass or two it just gets a bit easier exactly so but yeah how, how involved are you with the the entire conceptualization of your music videos uh, it depends uh, from video to video, like uh, Hopscotch, I made that with my friends, so I was very involved. And also the history one um, that I made with some uh, people I knew. Um, and um, but like Teardrops, that was like my old label who arranged all that. And with Drunk Tonight as well, I actually wanted a completely different video, but then the label took over and they were like, we have this idea and this director and and, and we can borrow this house and the swimming pool and we, we're going to do this now. And I had some completely other different ideas. So I wasn't too happy about that one, but that's what it's like. I mean, when you're at a label and obviously they have something to say as well and they're paying for it. So, <laughs> so yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's their vision, they're paying and uh, you're the actress. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, um, but, but yeah, but, and, and, some of the videos I did with some young students, like up and coming uh, people, I was very involved with as well. And and yeah, that like was really your, fun. Your your visit, your music video that you did um, for Rabbit, um, you did with uh, some some student filmmakers. Um, yeah. And you know, I, I've noticed you you like supporting young filmmakers who are starting out. Um, do you do you sometimes feel that these these student filmmakers that I wouldn't say student, maybe young filmmakers who haven't started out with a huge career. Do you feel they sometimes have more fresher concepts? 
Yes, a lot of the times. I mean, not always, but it was definitely the case with um, the two groups of people I work with. I They did a video for my song Rabbit and another uh, group did a, a video for a song called Going Ghost. And they were really cool and just had so many great ideas and they were so professional and just like made the schedule and everything just work perfectly. And, and um, it was a really, really great experience. But obviously you're not, I guess if you're working with like professional people, you're more safe and secure that you will get a product that yeah. you're happy with. So it's always a gamble, of course, when you're working with up and coming people. But yes, I think a lot of the times uh, they have a lot of fresh ideas and that was certainly the case here. So yeah. it worked out well. Yeah. I loved the video for Rabbit. I think it was very creative. Really? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so a, a question you've probably been asked a million times, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Mm -hmm. Why do you prefer to perform barefoot? Um, I've always done that since I was a kid, so it wasn't anything I made up for the Eurovision, but... Um... I think it's because like it helps for nerves as well. Um, it, like if you're really nervous and you're wearing like super high heels, it yeah. can get a bit shaky. So, <laughs> and I knew I would be nervous for the Eurovision final. There was like 200 million people watching. Yeah. So um, I think it was probably a good idea that I didn't wear stilettos that night. Um, and, and now I would say it's like 50, 50, sometimes I wear shoes and sometimes I don't. Um, if it's like a full concert, um, I might wear shoes for the first few songs and then I kick them off because I just can't stand it. It's yeah. like, it feels more free when you're not wearing shoes, yeah. I guess. Yeah, it's it's more comfortable and you feel a little more grounded, like- Oh yeah. You're with for the sure. audience, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm sure sometimes when you wear the stilettos, it's great because you can see straight over the, you can see the whole audience. <laughs> yes, and also I've got short legs, so it just looks better <laughs> with the high heels, so. <laughs> yeah, how, how tall are you? Uh, I guess I'm not small, small, but I'm not tall either. I'm like in between, I guess, like 167 centimeters. Okay. But what is that in? We, do you we know what that is well. uh, we use we use that as well i'm 183 oh um, okay yeah so like so my it, brother i guess yeah he's 183 yeah yeah so yeah you, you're not that short no but i guess just compared to the rest of my body you know some like really small people got really long legs compared to the rest of their body but <laughs> i guess i'm just like my legs are just <laughs> short i guess compared yeah. to <laughs> <laughs> But now to Eurovision. Yeah. You you were you entered with your song Only Teardrops. You were only 20 years old at the time. Yeah. How did you come to be at Eurovision? Whew. Well, um it started out with um actually I had a friend who was um who had been uh in a Danish on a Danish like talent show. And they were looking for singers. Um, actually, they were casting the judges for X Factor. So they weren't even casting the singers. They were just casting the judges to see who worked well on TV together. And then they needed some test singers. So I did that and they wanted me an X Factor, but I didn't want to do that because I've, I've always felt like Denmark, I guess the Danish X Factor is, I know it's huge in the UK, but in Denmark, um, I guess it's like there's a new winner every year and it's I feel like it's more about the judges and like all that drama and they're picking your songs and I felt like your vision is like original new songs that's been written and you get to compete with all of Europe and it's like so exciting and it's been a dream since I was a kid so um um I told the people uh that that I uh, met at that casting thing that uh, I much rather want to participate in your vision and then they sent me the email and phone number of my of the guy who became my future manager. So I just um, sent him an email with some of my songs, and and then he said, "Oh, come in on Monday, and uh, I have this song called Only Tear Drops, and I think it's like perfect for you." Because um, I I had um, obviously for many years played with Fraser, this Scottish guy, and we um, had like this folk duo. And Tear Drops is very much pop, but it's also it has like this 
Celtic folk vibe as well. Yeah, yeah. So even though I sadly did not write it, it just felt very right with all the other stuff I've, I'd written and worked on prior to Eurovision. Yeah. Um, and then we recorded it and sent it in. And, um, and um, I think we were picked out as some of the last, uh, one of the last songs to enter the, the Danish national selection. Um, but um, yeah, then we won the Danish selection and yeah. I was 19 at the time and 20 when I won Eurovision. So it was like right in between. Wow. Wow. Going from I mean, teenager to grown up, kind of. <laughs> a lot of people, quite. a lot of people don't know, but you're one of the youngest people to have won Eurovision. Um, yeah. Leon was actually the same age as you when she won. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And I guess Lena was quite young as well, right? Lena mm -hmm. from Germany. Yes. Yeah. Lena was also young. I think she was 21 though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was very young. And sometimes like when I look at that performance, I mean, I'm not ever like looking at it actually. I never watched the performance when I won <laughs> because I don't know, I think it's so awkward to watch myself, but I've seen the Danish, um, uh, the video from the Danish national selection and yeah, I'm not happy about it, but I mean, yeah. it went well and I won. But, you know, when you're 19, 20, you're really starting out and you're very inexperienced as an artist. And obviously I had played many gigs and festivals and like small festivals and like small like town parties or whatever. But I had never been on national TV before and like all the cameras and the in-ears, it was just so new to me and... I felt like I could have done a lot better today, but I mean, hey, it yeah. did. It, it went pretty okay, I think. But um, <laughs> I think it went. You know, you're always critical. Yeah, but you're always critical towards yourself. You know, when you watch an old performance like that. Yeah. Um, I think it's like that yeah. with a lot of people when they they see themselves from a couple of years ago, and people change. We grow up. Things happen. Yeah. So. I mean, even last year, I'm like, oh, why did I wear that dress? And what is wrong with my hair? I mean so it's true yeah, yeah it happens to to all of us you know yeah but when when they announced um that you were the winner they announced before even the voting was completed that you were i know that was i mean that's amazing uh, only a couple people have had that um yeah what what was going through your head did you realize like oh i've won it was crazy. That's a lot from that night that I don't remember. It was so overwhelming. I just remember everybody was so happy and screaming and we were running backstage and to the bridge and to the stage, um, the main stage. But um, a lot from that night is like really blurry because um, it was so overwhelming. Yeah. So I don't remember a lot actually. Because <laughs> uh, um, you, were, you were texting someone as well at one point. Um, like yeah. you won and you were walking to the stage. Uh, I know. And you were texting someone. Oh, that is so embarrassing. <laughs> I know I know Graham Norton made um, a couple jokes about that. He was I like, know. I know. I'm such a big fan. I, he's like, I just won the Eurovision, chat later. Um, who were you texting? Yeah, he thought I was tweeting or something. This is like really boring and kind of embarrassing, but like I was what 19 20 I was like so overwhelmed and I was like really scared that the hosts would ask me to do like this long speech because I had seen some of the other winners do that and I was like I don't know what to say like I'm so overwhelmed so I was texting like the press people who were like in charge for like doing all my press when I was in Malmo that year like what the hell am I going to say? I don't know what to say. I'm just like so happy, but I don't know what to say. Yeah. And uh, I was hoping he was like going to send me a reply and like for some ideas. But um, then I got on stage and there wasn't time for any speech because uh, I hadn't planned it. Because like, I, I don't want to plan it if if we don't end up winning um, yeah, at all. Yeah, that's a point if you've written it. Exactly. You, uh, you get up um, and it's not you. Yeah. Yeah, but I was like, oh, 200 million people are watching. I need some, I need some ideas. But then uh, there wasn't any time for it. We just went straight to like performing the song again. So it was completely like unnecessary. Actually. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, that was just me panicking and like writing my press people. <laughs> okay. So you know the secret now. Now you know, after all those years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> but um, tell me, do you do you get to keep the Eurovision trophy or do you have to hand it over to the next winner? You get to keep it because it's like um, the year and the city that you won. Um, and I still have it. It kind of broke. I'm sad to tell you. No. But I'm going to get it glued together. I had it for so many years. And I think a couple of years ago, I was like cleaning and I knocked it over and it broke. Oh no, oh no. But I'm going to find a way to glue it together. I promise. I just haven't had really the opportunity to do it. Then I moved and everything happened and COVID and, but I will fix it, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> when you fix, you, you can do a whole tutorial, how to fix oh your God. vision trophy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should do that. Yeah, yeah. Do you, wh why do you think that Eurovision has such a, a big audience? Why do you think people love it so much? Um, I mean, it's just like this crazy circus, like in a good way. I mean, that's why I love it. At least I've watched it since I was a kid and there's just everything in Eurovision, uh, all kinds of songs, all kinds of um, uh, genres and... Oh, is someone... Sorry, we're back. <laughs> no worries. Um, but um, there's always like this really, really great pop songs amazing pop songs um you know like euphoria crossover is like mainstream pop and i mean like you said abba and celine dion has won the competition but every year there's such great pop songs um yeah. i actually really like the cleopatra <laughs> last year that was that my song favorite. <laughs> that was so catchy and i mean sweden always sends something good and uh, i mean it's good every year i mean it's your vision is huge in sweden it's like Denmark, I mean, it's nothing compared to Sweden. Yeah. In Denmark, we have one night in Sweden. They, it goes on for several weeks and they have so many songs in the competition and they really take it seriously compared to Denmark where we're a bit snobbish in Denmark, kind of like the UK. So we're like, oh, Eurovision. No. But in Sweden, it's huge. And um, so, yeah, I've been more to Sweden, Germany and East, Eastern Europe after winning the Eurovision. I, of course, they were really proud in Denmark and I did a lot of gigs here as well. But yeah. in some countries, they just have another relationship with the Eurovision and but there's always also like and I, I say this with love but you know like the freak show songs and like the tall vampire or like the milkmaids or like whatever and from Poland and I and I just think it's really really fun so it's it's there's everything and yeah what is what has been like one of the standout Eurovision acts that that you when you think of Eurovision it's like oh yeah that one um, I think definitely Irene that won the year before me. I mean, she's such an amazing performer and an amazing yeah. singer. And for a song to cross over to mainstream radio. And I remember I was in Spain that summer and it was played at every uh, disco, discotheque. And I mean, I think that's one of the first times, I mean, that's happened. I mean, it, it, it has happened before, but yeah. Eurovision is a bit of its own world sometimes. So yeah. Um, it's because I was, world. Um, yeah, yeah, I got to, I actually met Lorraine a couple of years ago, we were backstage um, in Vienna uh, at the Life Ball. Yeah. And I don't know, but I don't know if she was confused to who I was, but she was literally hanging on me and she was like, oh my God, I love you so much. You're so beautiful. I love you. I love you. I was like, thanks, Lorraine. <laughs> She's so nice. I, I think she's really nice. I met her a few times as well. Maybe, um, I mean, you have kind of a resemblance with a Eurovision winner. Maybe she thought you were Conchita. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. But I mean, so funny because Conchita was on stage. Oh, yeah. So I see that. It was weird. But when I saw your picture for the first time, I was like, oh, is that like, are you related? Like you guys, I was like, oh my God, like you really look like each other. And some people actually asked me when I announced this interview, like, is that Conchita? Like, <laughs> so, but yeah. Um, when I posted I mean, our, when that's I posted a comp our poster, it was so yeah. funny. So many people uh, sent me messages and they were like, I first thought this was Emily and Conchita doing a song together. I know, but he's a very handsome guy. So, I mean, it's, I definitely mean it as a compliment. So. Oh, thank you. I, I love Conchita. <laughs> We've worked together um, 
on documentaries and I went to Vienna to film a two hour behind the scenes documentary at Eurovision there showing yeah. what it's really like. And you yeah. know, everyone was, was so nice that year. How was it? Oh, I need to watch, watch that one, that documentary. Yeah, it's on YouTube. It's I'll do that. It's Eurovision. I'm sure you'll, you'll enjoy yeah. it. It'll bring back memories, I think. Yeah, yeah. But, but no, everyone was, uh, everyone was uh, nice. I mean, we did some meet and greets with the other artists that year. And obviously I met um, quite a few of the other winners at like different gigs. Like I met Conchita as well. And she won the year after me and just yes. seemed so sweet and nice. And Marine and um, uh, Brotherhood of Man. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was yeah. The, the British show in England. I love that. I met them a few times in Germany as well. And uh, who else? The Olsen brothers, of course. And um, yeah, I met quite a few and everyone was really nice. And also at the meeting and greets. I mean, I have to say, though, they all gave me chocolate that year oh. as a present. Every one of them. And I love chocolate. And now I'm thinking... Maybe they wanted to make me look, look like really fat before my performance because I was like, I was like the favorite to win that year and everyone knew that. And they were like, oh, we're just gonna, she can't resist if we like bring her chocolate. And they all did that. And I just sat and like ate it in my hotel room and I did, I did gain weight. I mean, definitely. I think I was also stressed out, but I was like five kilos heavier than I was usually. From the chocolate. When I won. <laughs> From everything, I guess. Just stuffing my face. What kind of chocolate is your favorite? Um, oh, I mean, not the, not the really dark, like more like milk chocolate, I guess. With like, um, I like everything like nuka or like nuts or yeah. um, stuff like that. Yeah, I, I love the dark chocolate. So if you get the dark chocolate, put that aside. I'll put the milk chocolate aside for you and we can swap. Yeah, but the dark chocolate is healthier, so. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to learn how to eat that, but. <laughs> Did winning Eurovision change any of your relationships with your friends or your family? Um, not really. Um, not my close friends and family. I mean, they've always been like really supportive and they always knew that um, I wanted to sing and write songs and and yeah, they were just really, really happy and proud. Uh, so there wasn't anything like weird going on, but I mean, but of course, like maybe there was like some old, older like classmates that I haven't had contact with like for many years who was like, do you want to drink a coffee? And I was like, I haven't heard from you guys for like five years, but okay. <laughs> yeah, that happens, that happens. Yeah, and then they're like, why don't you answer? Like that's like so rude. And, yeah. and I didn't want to be rude, but it's just, I guess maybe people also forget that when, when something crazy like that happens, like winning the revision, you're really busy. And like, I had like 5,000 emails and I just like, could not like, I was like, I don't, I, I can't even open them or like answer. I'm like so stressed out. And usually like when you have like a success like that and just happens immediately, you have a very short amount of time, just, you know. It is instant. Gigging, sure. yeah, as much as you can, like promoting and traveling and writing new stuff, releasing new stuff and promoting, like I just had an album out and then it might be difficult to like get hold of you for like a year or two, but it doesn't like change anything. It's just... I think, I think they maybe think your life is like it always was, but that time was so crazy. So I only had time to see like my closest family and my closest friends. Yeah. Um, Once you've been there with you through the whole event. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really have time to like grab a coffee, like randomly. Cause it was like, just like, I was it's just trying to like keep myself up. together. Like, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to keep myself together and like, be a professional and, and I think that's also what when you're younger like it's it can be harder to deal with yeah like I now I'm 27 and I think it would, it would be much easier for me now compared to when I was 19 20 because you just get more overwhelmed I guess and it's harder to deal with stress I think yeah when you're younger so yeah, yeah. yeah. it's it gets better with age it does I guess indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but who is an artist that you would still love to collaborate with 
Uh, you're thinking your vision or just like in general? In, in general. Um, huh. I'm a big Kate Bush fan, but that is probably like really far-fetched. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I love Kate Bush and hmm, who else? I mean, I love Julia Michaels because I think she's an amazing songwriter and an amazing singer as well. She has such a unique voice and she's written some of the biggest uh, pop songs within the last few years. And yeah, that would be exciting. Yeah, That's probably really far-fetched as well, but... <laughs> Well, uh, Kate Bush but, yeah. hasn't done anything in a couple of years, so maybe hmm. she Who might knows? have a new song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which which one of your songs do you relate to the most? Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some that just comes very easy when I sing them live. And like you mentioned earlier, like the picture is just, they're there and it just feels very easy. Like I, I love um, singing Sanctuary live. Um, I think that's maybe one of the songs I can relate to the most. Yeah. Where is your sanctuary? Um, I think I have different sanctuaries. Um, I mean, music, of course, and anything that's creative. Like I loved doing that short film recently and but also just spending time with my friends and family, going for a walk, listening to music or podcasts and um, dog videos on Instagram <laughs> <laughs> and chocolate. Yeah. Uh, I wish I had a dog. I've always had a dog. I mean, with, with my parents um, who always had dogs. So it's kind of hard not to have one now, but it's not allowed in Copenhagen in a lot of apartments. So, of course. Yeah. So if it's, if We're it's just cool. not very dog friendly here. Yeah. If it's if it's in a city, I think it, it can be more complicated to to have a dog. I have my dog here. I think he's trying to say hello. Ugh. Here he is. Oh, how sweet. His name's Harry, like Harry hey. Potter. Oh, hi Harry. Hey. Oh, look at those eyes. Say hi They're to him. They're so Emily. big. <laughs> <laughs> so he's being very good tonight. Usually he's like like video bombing oh really yeah yeah it's like whoa, whoa, in the background there, there he goes oh he's he's behaving yeah yeah tonight he's good for emily because <laughs> i believe i should actually sort of be calling you her majesty um i i believe that you are the the great granddaughter of king edward the seventh through how, how is that how is that is that through his danish wife um the princess alexandria alexandra no i mean this is a really complicated story that i could actually talk about for hours so i have to try to make it short um but um i am uh, related to like swedish uh royalties and like noble families on my grandmother's side on my my, my dad's um mom yes who was swedish um and my dad's dad so my 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 uh, my paternal grandfather that's where the mystery is um who who his parents was and um there's like six different stories there's like king edward the seventh uh of course it's like uh, Habsburg, Austrian Hungarian prince as well, S or that his parents were circus artists, or that his p dad was like the Jewish baron who adopted him. There's like many more stories. Yeah. Uh, but the most famous one is the one about Edward VII. And I think I know why, but um, I've tried to look, look into it and I will definitely try to solve this mystery, but I think it may be hard to solve, but I've had uh, DNA tests, um, and once I get the time and money to maybe hire like a historian or like genealogist, I would like to solve this. But the thing is my, my grandfather and his brother was born in Paris and um, they got adopted by this uh, Jewish baron called Maurice uh, von Hirsch, uh, who built like the Balkan railways. Yeah. And at the time he was like the richest man in Europe. And there's like this story that he adopted some kids from uh, an orphanage. 
but I find it hard to believe that the richest man in Europe would just adopt some random orphanage kids and make them inherit everything. Uh, Maybe and have that's, of his own, so. That's the thing. And the thing is him and Edward with seventh was like really close. Uh, the, the Baron, the Jewish Baron lended him money because he had like an extravagant lifestyle and they traveled around in Europe, went to the same parties and rumor has it they slept with some of the same women. Oh. And the thing is my <laughs> grandfather and his brother are named Maurice and Edward. So the same name as uh, the Jewish Baron who adopted them, their adoptive father and his close friend, King Edward VII. Oh, wow. So maybe they didn't even know, maybe they didn't know, I'm not sure, but, um, but the thing is he adopted them maybe because it was his own bastard sons, uh, the Baron, or maybe he adopted them as a favor for the King. Yeah. We don't know. Um, but um, they had a very close connection and once um, the Baron, their adoptive father died, my grandfather went to uh, Buckingham Palace and his title, who was Austrian Hungarian, was made into a British title, which I think was unusual. And they had a very close connection, but we don't know if it was like a familiar one or if it was uh, an economical one, because it's hard to say, yeah. but um, but I really want to dig more and figure it out. I, I actually, for my DNA test, I had quite a bit of um, Jewish blood so I think it's the Jewish Baron, but everyone tells me to stick to the Edward VII story, but I would really like to know the truth. So yeah. hopefully I can find some relatives and maybe do a DNA test and see. I think that would be so cool if you if you investigated that history. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, like maybe write a book at some point. Who knows? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would love to, when you find out, let me know, because I want to know about that. I will. Yeah. You'll be the first one to know. Great, great. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, could, if you could go back to any time in history, what would it yeah. be? Uh, I think the 1500s, I guess, because as I mentioned before, I've always been fascinated with Anne Boleyn, um, almost two years ago, I went to Hever, uh, Hever Castle, her childhood home, and um, it was so fascinating to see her prayer book and, and where she grew up. And um, But I'm also really into like the Italian Renaissance and like the Medici, so I hope I yeah. pronounced that right. Yeah. Um, especially Isabella de Medici, I have her biography. And um, then I would go to um, England first and then Italy. But definitely the 1500s and I, again women in history has always fascinated me because um it wasn't easy back then i mean some yeah. of the stuff they i mean oh my god i mean both anne boleyn and and isabella de medici was murdered basically so yeah. Yeah. um yeah it was just like off with your head so it's exactly. i've always been really fascinated with women who just yeah grasp power like elizabeth or isabella Queen of England, the she wolf, you know, the princess from France. It's just, yeah. I love those yeah. stories. So you should check out um, the Egyptian queen Hatshepsut. I heard about, I know that name, but yeah. like I said, I need to dive more into um, ancient Egypt. But Hatshepsut, I will check her out. I will check, check her out. out. She's, yeah. She's a tough one, but. Oh, mm, I like the tough ones. Yeah. It's like a good biography on her. Um, yes, one of my guests that I'm speaking to next week, Friday, Kara Cooney, has a documentary on YouTube about Hatshepsut. Oh my God, so, I know who she is. You know, I Kara. follow her. I know I don't know her personally, but I follow her on Facebook. I've done that for quite a few years, maybe on Instagram as well. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. Well, join in. It's next week, Friday. So join in, come say hi to Kara. Sorry, what were you saying? My Siri started talking, so I didn't hear. <laughs> Um, no, I would say jo it's it's next week Friday, so join in, oh. come say hi to to Kara. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because uh, we were speaking about it before. We want to talk about strong women in history when we when we do our interview. So perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. But um, your song, history. 
Yeah. What was the inspiration behind that? I guess my love for history. I, I, I always wanted to write a song with that title and it can mean so many things like positive and negative. And um, like I was thinking about the, the phrase how um, like it's always the winners who write, write the history, writes the history, excuse me. <laughs> English is not my first language, so I'm trying my best. It it's not even my, my second. It's my third. It's my third. Um, but yeah. Um, Your English is so much better than my Danish. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But um, but yeah, also like um, it's, it's like a love story about a couple who's writing their own history together. So that's some of the inspiration for that. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I just love the song because as you said, there's a with the word history, it can have a good meaning, a bad meaning. It can mean like, oh, your history, yeah. whatever. What does history mean to you? Um yeah, like you like you said, it can be both good and bad. I guess mainly positive, like remembering your history. I think that's really important because you can easily like become like history less so like you like you don't have a history like it's it's so important to remember and you can learn from everything that's happening is really repeating i mean what we see now in politics and wars and just it's repeating so i think history is so important but i guess it can also be a negative like if you're like stuck in like your history or like your past which i was maybe more when i was younger and if it becomes like a negative thing it's also important to like look look forward and like move on so a bit of both I guess exactly but um you know how, how is how is adult Emily different now from teenage Emily um I mean I'm the same person but then again I'm not because I guess we're not the same person through life I mean it's I think a lot of things are easier now. Like I said before, like when you're younger, oh my God, being a teenager, what an awful time actually. And <laughs> and when you start out as an adult, like when you're like 19, 20, 21, it's like, ugh, you don't know anything. I mean, but yeah. I'm, I'm not saying it's just better to be old because it's also like this young, fresh energy, you know, where sometimes I'm not saying it's always like that, but you know, I know some older people, you know, then they only talk about, curtains or whatever <laughs> I'm not saying it's always like that but it's true like young pe young people also have like that freshness and energy but but it's there's a lot of things that are harder and you get overwhelmed more and I remember like I would often think oh my god like the world is coming to an end like this is so awful and now I'm more like oh whatever like I'm I don't take things so serious as yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's because I definitely like when I was younger I could get more depressed and and I think now that I'm older it's like easy to handle like I know like I've been there and I feel like I won't end there again I mean I, I mean you don't know really but I mean it's just yeah it's it's definitely better to be older for sure it's yeah. I'm glad I'm not a teenager anymore yeah. more experience more experience yeah yeah what can we expect from you next, Emily? Uh, new music in 2021, for sure. Um, I'm so bummed that I didn't get anything released in 2020, but things took a turn. As we all know, um, the last time I actually released something was in 2018. And that is almost, I mean, soon it will be three years. So that's crazy. But I've just been writing and writing. Um, I had a lot of trips abroad. I've been working with some people in France and... Uh, the UK and Sweden and then last spring in 2020 I was kind of getting ready to um, present that stuff um, I also did some other like TV things um, like 2018-19 like Dancing with the Stars yeah I was dancing in fact on TV Wow! I made it halfway I made it halfway <laughs> through the show uh, so that's okay um, and some other like TV things you where I was a judge dance. you can dance there we go I mean, the more like standard, what do you call them, like classical, like waltzes and stuff was easier. The Latin ones with the hips, 
I'm really bad at. It's not my thing. I was completely lost. But um, but yeah, I was kind of getting ready to um, to uh, present those songs that I'd written because um, I was looking for new collaborators because I, I, I was with Universal in Denmark and I've been independent. And then I was with a label in Stockholm as well for uh, my EP and some singles. But then COVID happened and the world went into lockdown. And of course you can do Zoom meetings and I've done that, but it's kind of hard to get out there and present your new stuff when the world is just completely closed down. Yeah. So um, I have like a deadline, which is actually on my birthday. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I found a great producer in London. Um, he's finishing three of my tracks and uh, I've never been as excited ever about um, stuff I've written before. I guess that's a good thing about lockdown. I've had so much time to, in the songs that I, I thought was finished and ready last year, I've written a ton of new stuff and I've improved the songs that was already there. So um, 2021 will definitely be the year where I'm releasing new music. Oh, so, I'm so excited to hear the new music. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can, you us, can you give us a preview? <gasps> it's very secret. And also, I'm not sure what the first single will be because there's two, two like very strong contenders and I haven't decided yet. And also, I need to find someone I can work with because I released music myself before and with an indie label and, and with Universal as well. Um, but if you really want more people to notice, I think I, I need to find the right team yeah. first. But um, you need yeah. that engine behind that's you. That's the plan. Yeah, and like somebody who shares a vision and is really excited about the music as well. Um, so I need to have like the right team because sometimes there's so much re music release now nowadays, and if you just release it, it it can just disappear Lost. kind of into Lost, yeah. a cloud of other songs. So, uh, so I have a lot of work ahead of me this year, but it's exciting. Yeah, well, I know that it's going to be a great success for. The new music, I cannot wait to I hope so. hear it. Um, I know you've you've been working hard on it, so best of luck with that. Thank and you. Yeah, Emily, I just want to say, you know, thank you so so much for giving your time today to to talk to us, to tell us more about yourself, and I really really feel like we got to know you a lot better. Really yeah oh i'm happy it was it's so cozy and so nice to chat with you i was so excited when you asked me because you know it's it's locked down i'm just sitting at home <laughs> writing songs in my underpants and eating a lot of stuff and you know i don't get to exercise as much as i should so i was really excited i'm like i'm gonna put on my makeup and oh. and chat with you today so <laughs> yeah, I, I also i did my hair and everything because usually i'm like ugh, no one's gonna see me it looks great. I thank love your hair. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but um, thank you so, so much for giving your time. It was such an honor to get to know you. I'm sure we're going to do a follow up once the new music's out so we can hear more of it and hear the inspiration yes. behind the songs. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So before we, we end to take a couple questions from the audience, um, I have some quick fire questions for you. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. okay. I am. Favorite place that you have visited? Um, oh God. And, um, um, Tel Aviv. <laughs> great food and great beaches. Yeah. Favorite song? Oh my God. Um, Wuthering Heights maybe? Okay. Kate Bush? Yeah. It's one of them. Okay, you should do a cover of that. <gasps> but it's so great. I don't know how I can top that, but have a think about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, favorite thing to do on your day off? Um, go for a walk, listen to a podcast, read a chapter or two in a book and watch a great film. Yeah. 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 Favorite Eurovision winner? Um, I would have to say Abba or Lorene. Yeah, one of those two. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty great. <laughs> yeah. One piece of advice you can give to anybody entering Eurovision? Um, have fun. Remember to have fun and enjoy it because um, I did have fun, but I was also like really stressed out and it was like so overwhelming. So 
I, I did have fun, but I think I could have had even more fun if I had just like chilled a bit, to be honest. <laughs> so just really, really enjoy it because it is a lot of fun and it's like, it's an adventure. So enjoy it. Yeah. And the last one, who inspires you? Women in history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Anne Boleyn and Elizabeth, any, any woman really, I, when I think about it, um, all my favorite, of course, I have male favorite actors as well, but some of my favorite actors are actresses. And when I look at my Spotify, I almost always listen to female artists because that's where I get inspired. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I prefer female singers as well. I think they just sound better. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 I don't know why. Oh, I'm happy to hear that because mostly, like, I feel like guys prefer male singers, but, oh. and, and, Females prefer female singers, but I get it's really nice to hear. There's so many my boyfriend bad, is... there's so many bad male singers out there that I just... <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Because oh. I'm working with a lot of guys and they're always like, Oh, did you hear this this new guy who released this and that? And and yeah, I have to I have to admit I, I mostly listen to females. So yeah. Mm. Ah, well. Emily, thank you so, so much. This has been so fun. Who would have thought that a pandemic and Instagram would have brought a Eurovision winner and an Egyptologist filmmaker together? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much. Um, it's great to get to know you. And now- You too. Oh, thank you. And now if any of the audience members have a question for Emily, Please ask them now. Hey, Curtis. Hi, Emily. Hi. Hi, Asset. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi. How are you? Thank you so much for being here for the interview. I really enjoyed that today. Um, Thank you. As a musician, um, I always like to hear how people are inspired to write and um, so one of the ways that I write is just very intuitively and if you would see my music there are just little chicken scratches on the scales because I don't remember enough of my music theory yeah but um, sometimes I notice that when, when I'm writing a song or you know putting it together um, I, I want to know a little bit more about like chord progressions and things like that because I play a lot by ear um, so is there a favorite like that's a very obscure question but is there a favorite chord progression that you like to play around in I have one and it's like it's like the most used I guess I mean I didn't go to the music conservatory or anything that was actually my plan but then your vision happened and you know then I never went went back because it was my plan to apply. So um, I'm just very intuitive as well. My boyfriend went to the music conservatory, so he knows all that stuff and chord progressions and stuff like that. But um, I love the one which is like so classic. It's like F, no wait, C, G, A minor, F, I think it's like the most classic almost, like uh, Imogen Heap's hide and seek. And there's like the other, like really sad, there's a lot of ballads in that progression, like Rihanna stay. And I don't even remember the chords, mm -hmm. but like very simple as well. I think A minor and something else. Um, so yeah, it's it's a lot of the times it's really basic, but then sometimes I actually switch up the chords because even after you've written the song, you can change the chords into like anything really. And it makes the melody like more exciting or different. Right. So um I do that a lot of times, like maybe I get Jacob to help me. We work a lot together. He's a songwriter as well, my boyfriend. So um, then we might change the chords after uh, we've written it and test out some some things. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so that would be handy to have someone. <laughs> yeah. That would be handy to have someone that knows all of that. So be handy yeah, to have a Jacob. To playing and it's like, I want something else to come Yeah. 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 Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. My fiance is actually an opera singer in Italy. Um, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, I love opera. I love it so much. I wanted to be an opera singer as a kid. Well, uh, he also teaches at the uh, at the conservatory. He does um, vocal wow. coaching. 
um, and teaching opera. So it's crazy how they can, wow. I mean, their voice is like truly an instrument and they don't even need mics or anything. I don't know how they do it. I know, it's, I know, yeah. And you see them standing next to each other and they're doing these huge notes. I'm like, how are you not deaf? Yeah, yeah. it's crazy, <laughs> wow. <laughs> do, we, do we have another question for Emily? Well, I have a question. <laughs> Hi, Billy. Hi, Emily. Hi. Hi, Curtis. Hi, Emily. Um, just want to ask you a question because one of my favorite songs from yours is Rainmaker. Oh, I just really? think it's just, it gives me that energy. It just makes me feel really positive. We listen to it over yeah. and over again through this pandemic. So I was just wondering what was your inspiration for writing that song? Um, I remember I was in Stockholm uh, when we wrote it. It was me and Jacob and a guy called Frederik Sonefors, who's um, He's done a few revision songs with months as well and um i remember we we um we talked about doing something like very like tribal and um i just saw these images with like a, a dried out land and like desert and it hadn't been raining for like months and and this rainmaker um making everything bloom and grow again um and yeah it's sort of just happened uh and um i was really excited about it after i went home um but it wasn't until i was still like oh is it will it be the right single but then i played it for a couple of people i was working with and they were like oh my god this is like the next single and it has to be like the theme song for your vision 2014 because it's so like you said energetic and like uplifting and hopeful and um and actually a lot of people have come up to me and said they prefer rainmaker to only teardrops a lot yeah, of people have I said agree. that and yeah. I'm just like well thank you because <laughs> I didn't write teardrops but I wrote Rainmaker so I'm like thanks yeah it's a really good song just thank you uh, thank you for the amazing song thank you do we have uh, another question I see Andrew is unmuted it's 4 a.m oh sorry you're in oh Australia. my god <laughs> oh my god it's like in the middle of the night what yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> My mom is here, Emily. This is Cheryl. Yeah. Hi, Emily. Lovely oh, hi, Cheryl. I'm Lovely so to meet you too. Joined, and um, I just would like to say to you, you were talking earlier about um, how you felt at uh, Eurovision. Um, I think you looked great. Um, your dancing was <laughs> superb, and um, you should never worry about that. And Rainmaker is also just such a beautiful song. Uh, I don't have a question, oh, but thank I you. just keep going. And we are so looking forward to your new music. Thank you. Well, that was so lovely to hear. Right. I needed to hear that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Great. So Wendy wanted to type Someone a question. Wrote. Wendy, type your question. What's your question? I, I figured out how to open the chat. Mm. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of messages in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's I love her nails. <laughs> Thank you. This took me forever. And I think it looks like, actually, if you look them up close, it look, kind of looks like a child. I don't know, it didn't want to dry. So it ended up like all over the place, but it's thank a new you. trend. <laughs> a new trend. Yeah. I just don't have the patience with nail polish. It takes forever. Yeah. Um, Wendy says, hi, I was wondering, what is your second language? You mentioned that English was your third language. Amazing. Uh, my second language is, um, is Swedish. Um, my dad was Swedish. So, um, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I grew up with both Danish and Swedish, but because I, I, I grew up in Denmark, I feel like Danish is my first language, but, um, I go to Sweden and work once in a while and um, and when I'm there I, I like tap into it like after a week I start thinking in Swedish and like texting friends and family here in Denmark in Swedish so so yeah that's my second language. Yeah. Um, I see Keith. Keith is a bit shy. He spoke to you at the beginning but I see he's a bit shy. Yeah. Uh, Keith says do you find any inspirations from Disney songs from the movies Moana, Frozen etc. <gasps> I love Disney movies. Um, I haven't seen Moana actually, that's too bad. But I've seen Frozen um, and um, 
I mean, I love Disney films, all the old ones, and I mean, Lion King, um, what else? Anastasia, is that, that's maybe not a Disney film, actually. Um, but they made some really great ones in the 90s. Yeah. Um, Beauty and the Beast and... Oh yeah, Beauty and the Beast. And I mean, it, it has probably inspired me in some way because there's always music in Disney films. And I loved learning those songs and singing them as a kid. And, and um, so yeah, that's probably inspired me in some way. Yeah. You have to watch Moana. It's definitely quite inspiring. If I'm in yeah. the wife isn't around, I even sing and I don't break the glass too bad. Write that down because I've watched so many shows this year. Lockdown, yeah. Due to lockdown. So it's like I need new suggestions and like inspiration for some shows because I feel like I watched it all. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I think a lot of us feel so thank that you for that lockdown. We've all finished everything that we, we enjoy watching. So uh, yeah. 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 But, um, you know, Emily, this has been great. Thank you so, so much. Thank you to all the viewers for watching and asking your questions. Yes, thank you. Yes. So until we, until we speak next time, Emily, I hope that you stay safe. Keep writing, keep singing, keep acting, keep yeah. dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that one, but yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you and take care, uh, all of you, and be safe. And um, hopefully, uh, I speak to you soon. And once I have some new music out, that would be fun. Yes, everyone, go follow Emily on Instagram so you can be up to date when the new music comes out. Yesterday evening, to uh, the Eurovision videos that. Um that you posted or the ones that were on YouTube. And I saw Emily for the very first time. She has an amazing voice. Oh, Emily is amazing. Thank you. I see she's on. Yeah, I am. And the tear <laughs> one actually caused tears in my eyes, you know? It's like, oh my God. I love that. <laughs> Happy to hear that. <laughs> Hi, Emily, how are you doing? Hi, I'm Hi, good, I'm how are you? I'm good. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining. It's such an honor to get to speak to you. Well, you too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I have a lot of questions for you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know you do. <laughs> I mean, it's quite a crazy story how we even got connected to do this interview. I mean, through Instagram, it's like... Instagram wallpapers, but it's a place now. It's It's... Seems it's like where I meet everybody yeah. now. <laughs> so, you know, we, we're all connected. So, so how, I, I was wondering how is like, is there a lockdown in Denmark? What is happening there? Oh yes. Uh, we've had several lockdowns. Um, can you hear me? I, I can hear you. Perfectly. Actually. Am I okay? Okay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I just couldn't hear myself. <laughs> 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 but um yeah we had lockdown since uh mid-december and we were supposed to open up um february no january 17th at first then it was prolonged until february 7th and now until my birthday 28th of february so okay. yeah okay. so yeah. so you're a pisces like me Yes, are you Pisces as well? I am. When I'm when the, is when is your birthday? I'm on the fifteenth of March. Oh, yeah. So so we're quite close there. <laughs> yeah. Are you into astrology? I am. I I often check like my horoscope, and sometimes I, I like to check it in a previous day to check how accurate it was. <laughs> yeah. 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 To see if it was true. Yeah. But do you true. know like? Do, yes like my mom is really into it and I had like my whole um horoscope made you know with uh what is it called like you know your star signs you know the different planets and like descendant ascendant I guess it's called yeah have you tried that ever like have made like your full horoscope I, have you ever I done that checked, like the the ascending moon and all of that stuff yeah 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 
I need to check that. What is your ascending moon or however you refer to that? Uh, ascendant is uh, Sagittarius. Sagittarius. Which is like a fiery sign. Yeah, yeah. And that's why it's fun to like know all the planets because sometimes it doesn't, I am really Pisces, but you know, it doesn't always fit. So like you need to know like all of your signs and all yeah. the planets basically, I guess. So yeah. And I, I think uh, it's important also to to know when you're speaking to other people, I think to know uh, what what star signs they are because you can you can sort of gauge, am I right, like their personality a little. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And even sometimes the way they look. Yeah. I don't know, like the hair, I can always like recognize the Leo or like something about the eyes of a Scorpio. Yeah. Maybe I'm just weird. <laughs> Well, but yeah it's, it's like my my mom was a pisces uh my mom is an aries my dad yeah. was an aries so yeah. you can you imagine the two of them living together it's like i know it's like really two fire signs yeah under one roof that's <laughs> yeah. sounds explosive <laughs> yeah. yeah and but, I'm, I'm on the border but i'm more pisces than aries so oh yeah me, yeah you know Okay. Yeah. Mine and mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. My mom is my mom is Pisces and my brother is Pisces and my dad was Scorpio. So Okay, okay. Water yeah. signs. Yeah. All four of us. Yeah. That's so interesting. Like who would have thought <laughs> about talking about star signs? I mean I don't bring yeah. it up often because some people think I'm like, Ooh. yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I know what you mean, but I think it's just like fun. Like you said, like checking your like weekly horoscope and I mean, it's fun, but I don't like plan my life after, yeah. after like the stars. My mom is a bit like that sometimes. It's like, oh, oh, like tomorrow is a bad day if you're like <laughs> for meetings or like something like that. I'm like, mom, I don't take it that like seriously, but I think it's fun. Yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, I I check it the day after to to see if it was accurate or not. So yeah, yeah, I, I want to know what's coming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's good to know. Yeah, Dara has has said should uh, should he should I say my sign? Yeah, Dara, say your sign. But Emily, we can hear you so clearly. Oh, that's good. You so you're a professional, so you have professional headphones. <laughs> yeah, I just got these so. Are those the new ones? I thought, I hope, yeah, it's the new ones that I got. The other ones broke. Oh my God. I've had two that broke actually recently. I've been unfortunate. So oh, they send me. How, how do you break them? I don't know. Like suddenly it just gets, you know, like it keeps falling out when I record. Oh. I don't know. Yeah. The vocal cords and are too strong and it, it blows them. Maybe that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Could Go be. with that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so no um i i was recording some voiceovers the other day for a documentary and i had i've got like little earphones i don't use the, the headphones because my headphones broke no replaced them and yeah for some reason the one side blew because i was peaking so yeah i need yeah, to I go and get some hey by the way i saw your uh documentry <gasps> today which with one? atari Nefertari. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> I liked think? it. What did you think? I loved it. I mean, I'm I'm not an expert. I'm I'm really not, but I've always been fascinated with like ancient, ancient Egypt and that's why I thought it was pretty cool when um you asked me if I wanted to do this interview. Yeah. Um yeah. but yeah, I just um I guess it maybe it stems back from like the first time as a kid when I watched like The Prince of Egypt and then <laughs> ever since <laughs> Ever since, like, if I went to a museum, like, in Copenhagen or Louvre or, you know, anywhere, really, if there's, like, uh, an Egyptian uh, exhibition, I just, I have to see it. Oh. And we have one uh, that's always there in, in Copenhagen at uh, the Glupsatik. So, um, so, yeah, I just find it, like, really fascinating yeah. seeing all, like, the mummies and the cat mummies and the jewelry and... Exactly. the sculptures and the gods and it's just yeah and i'm glad i saw it because i've always been mixing up nefertiti and nefertari i was like what is what is the difference and exactly. i guess it lived 
almost at the same time, not quite? Was it like 50 years apart or? So yeah, they're, like um, we think that Nefertiti and Nefertari were related. Nefertiti came before and mm -hmm. we think that Nefertari is the granddaughter of Nefertiti's father. So they are, oh, okay. and there's like 30, between 30 and 50 years difference between the two of them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's true. A lot of people get it confused. Um, yeah, because of the names. <laughs> the but names are so similar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and she... there's, a, there's a queen that was around 300 years before Nefertiti or Nefertari. Her name was Ahmosa Nefertari. Yeah. Oh, that's confusing. It gets very confusing. But she's not as famous, or. She's or is not, she quite famous? She's not as famous. Um, no. She is the, the great, great grandmother of Tutankhamun. Um, okay. So it was her family that chased the invaders out of Egypt and they settled like all the disruption in Egypt. Yeah. yeah. But it's interesting because her name means the horizon of the beautiful one to come. Oh, and that's her like great great granddaughter. Yeah, exactly. And right. Nefertiti huh. is like some say the beautiful one has come or the beautiful one will come. Yeah. And Nefertari means the beautiful one of all. So it's weird how the names predict. Yeah. That's really strange. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm so happy you watched it. The, <laughs> yes. I mean, she sounded like a really striking intriguing woman so yeah sure, and sure. especially women in history it's like that's my thing that's my favorite yeah yeah you i know, think anne boleyn I mean, and queen elizabeth and yeah and all those amazing and, women yeah and queen elizabeth yeah the first and the the current queen elizabeth they're so amazing yeah are you watching the crown anyone uh, I, <laughs> I have finished the third yeah. season of the crown and i'm like ah oh, i need some more <laughs> yeah 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 i'm not sure that's very accurate though <laughs> oh the the crown yeah no i guess they make a lot of drama to make it interesting to watch but it sure is entertaining it is very entertaining yeah yeah i loved it <clears throat> i love the crown did you guys see the show that just came out on netflix called the dig Oh, I've no. got that to watch later. I pressed, yeah. I pressed yeah, download on that. Um, when my Wi-Fi came back on, I was like, download. So I, I watched it last night. I loved it. Yeah. What, what is it? It's a movie on Netflix. Uh, yeah. Um, it's a dramatization of the, um, the Sutton Who. Am I pronouncing that right, Jill? Yeah, Sutton Who, yeah. Um, finds it that they, uh, a boat. Um, from, they found it in 1939, mm -hmm. a private land. It was, I thought it was great. I, and I'm very critical of movies, of yeah. and Egyptology movies. And I, yeah, I gave it five stars. <laughs> right, yeah. Then I bet it's good. But I mean, you have to be critical. I mean, if you watch a lot of stuff, I mean, yeah. you end up being critical because there's so many great things out there, but there's also a lot of bad stuff. So you kind of want want to avoid that. So exactly, exactly. Yeah. There's um. I've just started watching Stranger Things. Yeah, what do you think? I love it. I'm on season two already. Oh, I mean, season one is oh, amazing. Season two, hmm, I don't know. Season three is better, I think, than season two. So you have to keep watching. But yeah. but I guess, I guess like the first season is always hard to top because they set it all up and these kids and all the characters and it's just yeah. really exciting. But yeah. um, and you don't know what's happening. Yeah. That's the... yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, the writer is in it. So <laughs> I love Oh, her. yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's great. Yeah. yeah. She, I mean, how old you guys her last name? Her name is Winona Horowitz. She oh, changed yeah. her name. I'm related to her somehow. <gasps> Don't know how, but I am. <laughs> yeah, she changed her name. And did you notice she doesn't wear lipstick anymore? um no but how come uh because she stole lipstick from the store a couple years ago um way i remember that 
she was shoplifting. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Why did she do that? She's, I guess for some people it's like a thrill. She's like addicted to it. I don't know. I don't know. I think I think it was more of a thrill, but she tried to cover and say it was for a movie that she was making, but she wasn't making a movie. Oh, that's embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. It's so bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, goodness. So I see we're getting more people joining. Um, a lot of people um, prefer to watch it later because some people are quite shy. They don't want to, to ask questions or to be seen on Zoom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. But this is just the recording mind. before, so. <laughs> I actually really threw my thinking yesterday when I was asking Marissa about the uh, curse because <laughs> When I started, I was going to say, um, your enthusiasm is infectious. And I thought, God, I can't use the word infectious, not with this pandemic going around. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not the best right now. Yeah. <laughs> I changed it. And then it threw what I actually wanted to say. And, and it really was about the, um, um, the curse that they, the newspaper people made up in 1922 when they found Tutankhamun, little knowing that there actually was a curse in the tomb, which was a very much earlier tomb than Tutankhamun, and obviously not a pharaoh as well. But, uh, but I thought that was quite interesting, really. Yeah. Who was that about again? Who was in the tomb? And the newspaper people just made it up. They made up a curse. Yeah. It really was. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, the the whole story of of Howard Carter and the the curse of Tutankhamun. When you look at it, it is weird how so many people died. It wasn't just Lord Carnarvon. There were a lot of people that died, but you can actually trace that to illnesses that yeah. they had. Malaria or like malaria. Um, mm -hmm. Lord Carnarvon got a, a mosquito bite, and he was shaving, mm -hmm. and it got infected. Um, so it was malaria on top of blood poisoning and all kinds of things. When was that? Was it the 1920s or? Yes, 1922. Yeah. yeah. Mm, and yes. the sad Not thing long. is, like Lord that. Carnarvon, the sad thing is Lord Carnarvon paid for this whole ex excavation to happen. And he died before he even got to see the mask of Tutankhamun. Oh, no. Yeah. That yeah, that sucked for him. Carter didn't die until it was 1939, wasn't it? So if somebody was going to die because of the curse, he would have died much earlier. Yeah. Yeah. yeah think so, yeah. <laughs> About the movie, the dig, the archaeological dig. I mean, it's archaeology related, but it's not Eurovision related. Yeah. I just wanted to know what... Most of this is not... So I don't know what it means. Well, I'm, into, I'm into archaeology as well, so... I was going to say that for your question, what I what well, I wanted yeah, to do if I if I didn't do music, but that's definitely a female Indiana Jones or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, when we when we get to recording, <laughs> there's a movie on Amazon Prime. I think it's called The Mummy. Please do not ever watch that one. It's awful. Oh, I have watched it as a kid. Oh no, no the that's the one with um, Brandon and. Uh, What's her name? Rachel Weisz, yeah. She's a really good actress, though. I was kind of surprised she was in that one. That one I liked. But, that uh, one's better than the new one with Tom Cruise. Oh, I haven't seen the one with Tom Cruise. But yeah, the first Mummy is was okay, but the second, with that guy, I can't remember his name, and Rachel Weisz, that was pretty bad, where they're in London. And and seen that? Oh, with The Rock, yeah. Yeah, and yeah well, he's like the Scorpion King. Yes. That and was it was just at the beginning, like early stages of like, uh, computer like whatever and and he looks really funny he looks, yeah cgi he looks like a <laughs> you know the guy who plays um the mummy is actually south african yes i think yeah. i might have googled that or like looked that up on imdb is he yeah. famous um he is quite famous here he acted in a lot of um south african movies before he moved to america and became more popular there so he's very yeah. um south africans are like very proud of him yeah yeah, yeah he's, he's a 
if they were to do a remake, Curtis, I think you could be the better one. Oh, yeah. Have- oh, he should be the new Imhotep. Yeah. Right. <laughs> could you imagine with the shaved head? <laughs> no, I couldn't actually. Yeah. I think you should, I think you should uh, keep the hair. Yeah. 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 Exactly. They did have hair, so. <laughs> yeah. Didn't they wear wicks? They, did they, they shave it off and then? So uh, a lot of people did shave it all off because of the heat and bugs and things like that. And they would have the wig that they would put yeah. on. Um, also to go to sleep, you just take your hair off, put it there, and then you wake up and it's done. Um, yeah, that sounds perfect yeah. to me. It's like Dolly Parton or someone just yeah. <laughs> put it on but and then... Dolly goes to sleep with that wig on, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, because I mean, how did they get it get it like that big? I mean, the women especially, it was like quite huge, it looked yeah, huge, like, a, like some of the sculptures and like paintings you see. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you look at um, at someone like Queen T, um, mm-hmm. Tutankhamun's grandmother, she actually had her own natural hair, like this long, wavy, brownish, reddish yeah. hair on mm-hmm. on her mummy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's quite amazing. Mm. Yeah. So have you been to Egypt, Emily? No, never, but mm. I want to. Okay, so that's, that's we can but the next travel again. we're going. Yeah, yeah. Egypt. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> exactly. We'll, we'll plan it. We'll, we'll plan it in a way like you can do a concert in front of the pyramids and then the whole trip is paid. Oh my God, is that possible? You can. Is that possible? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Coldplay and Beyonce and a couple people have done yeah, okay. shows there. But that's like Coldplay and Beyonce, I mean. <laughs> well, Beyonce is banned now. I'm not there yet. What? Beyonce is banned now. She can't go back. Oh, she's banned? Why? She, uh, she pissed off Zahi Hawass. Uh-oh. Quite I don't know who that is, but it doesn't sound good. <laughs> yeah, um, he's, the, he's the, the minister of antiquities and uh, they were, he was taking her around the pyramids and all she wanted to do was take selfies and take pictures while he was mm. speaking to her. Um, so eventually just said, leave. Whoa. Yeah. So she hasn't been back since? No. Who is that? Beyonce? Beyonce. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I understand she wanted pictures, but I mean, it is a bit rude. She could have maybe waited on Slap. Exactly. Exactly. Right.